What? I, I don't, I don't, I don't get, oh shit. Now fuck it, I'm going. Good morning, everybody. And here we are again. <clears throat> and today, I guess we're going to talk about subwoofers and <clears throat> we're just not even going to cover brands because it's kind of irrelevant at this point and for today's subject uh so brand won't really have anything to do with this run what you got uh what i like to talk about is motor force and cone area great subjects right and without getting too technical motor force is a direct relation to how well a sub makes use of the power that it gets, okay? Now that we got that out of the way, I'm wanting to rebuild this Jeep. I'm gonna rebuild this Jeep. I mean, it's nasty with 415s in it. I mean, with these stock Genesis, bone stock Genesis, you know, I wrenched their potential because I have a shit ton of power. Uh, and they still popped off a 63.5. And, I mean, that's just a great number for a really cost-efficient subwoofer that sounds just good. And that being said, I just want more. I want more nastier demo because, you know, in 2019 when I built this thing and I was going to shows, people would get in here and be like, damn, that's beast. But now you got people, you know, throwing like 2012s and something. And, well, yeah, I mean, 2012s. Hard to compete with 2012s at 415s. But then again, you know, I mean, it's still a nasty demo. But I just would like to do something different because this build has been in here so long. And it's the first, like, wall that I ever built. The first sixth order I ever built. Uh, did I cut corners? Yeah, no. I mean, I'd use cheap pine plywood. I triple layered it, but I didn't get this part of the roof done right actually when i built this i stopped it like right here so this was just steel like the the steel skin of the jeep so i've had a lot of roof problems from day one but it's time for a rebuild now let's get into today's subject which is motor force versus cone area you know on one hand i could probably fit 812s in here without even having to rip this out which, on the other hand, I need to to fix all this. But, I could. Just leave it how it is. Put a different baffle in it. Move it up for the airspace. I get the 812s in there and be done. And it would be louder and nastier. And it would give me more motor force. If I got four motors, I would have eight. So, that would be a big benefit. It would be way, even more efficient, you know. But... 812, or I mean 12-12s, woo, way more motor force, way more cone area. Uh, 812s would give me more cone area than I have now. Not a whole lot, but it would give me more. And then we get into the old uh, 615s, which was my original plan, which is going to give me a lot of cone area, uh, more than the 812s. <clears throat> Not quite as much cone area as the 12-12s, but it would be a lot easier build to do. And in almost every scenario that I draw out on paper or run through my head, it seems like the 615s is going to be the winner just because of the amount of cone area and adding two more motors in here. But, you know, with that cone area, you're also losing the motor force that I would have with the 812s or 1212s. So the efficiency could go down some, but... With the 615s, I mean, people call in, they see 615s versus 1212s, and, you know, when it's a nasty demo, it's going to be a little more impressive. But then again, like I said, you're losing some of that motor force, which really, at the end of the day, does help with your efficiency and everything. So that's where I'm at. I'm really stuck on what to do here. And I mean, a lot of guys, when they run these scenarios through their head, they're just like, uh, more cone area is king. Yes and no. I mean, because the extra motor force from having multiple woofers. 
But there's more to it than that because at the end of the day, you got to break down like, you know, 12 12s is going to be like way, way more expensive than 615s. Because in reality, a 12 only costs 20 to $50 more. Or a 15 only costs 20 to $50 more on most brands than a 12, you know. So buying 12 woofers versus six. Mm. But I've already got these four, so I just have to add two more versus I'd have to add 12 12s or eight 12. So one, the cost. Two, I'm doing a rebuild, so it wouldn't really matter on the build aspect. It would be a lot harder to build for 12 12s than it would the 615s. So got to take that into consideration. Doing 12 12s, I might be stuck with a fourth order, which I don't want. Like, I would do everything in my power to get away from a fourth order. I mean, I've heard some loud, nasty builds with a fourth order, but you're limited to songs that you can play. Because most fourth orders, they just have a, a peak, and they're done. <sighs> yeah, they can play low. And when you get a shit ton of cone area, you can play a lot more music because even though if you're not in your peak, it's still going to be loud from all the cone area. But fourth orders, I do not like near as much as sixth orders. But so there's that to take into consideration. And whatever I do, I'm going to use the power that I have. I don't really want to add power out, off the rip. So four 8Ks, strapped or not strapped, it don't really matter. Uh, right now they're strapped and I'm loving them, but that's because they're at a half ohm. <laughs> so they're making a lot of power. I have power for days in here now. Uh, but yeah, these are the things that I'm struggling with. Uh, you know built doing a whole new build and what to put in it you know obviously the ease would be not to do a total rebuild and just put 812s in here but with 812s uh i'm not doing a whole lot more i mean it is more cone area but not a whole lot more cone area than i have now but the motor force would go up which means the efficiency would go up but then you know the hardest to be 1212s the most cost efficient to be 12 or cost would be 12 12s the easy i mean the middle mediocre easiest to be the 615s doing a rebuild and the cheapest cost wise will be 615s and tons of cone area at 615s i can definitely do a sixth order with 615s so these are things that i'm struggling with guys and wood prices right now are like insane so that 615s, that just keeps looking better. But at the end of the day, I'm getting so torn on what to do in here. I run all these scenarios through my head. And I mean, one thing that I'm definitely not going to do that I see a lot of people do that just irks the shit out of me is when you build a big ass box and slide it in, sealed it off, call it a wall. I am not doing that. I'm not hating on you if you do that or your build is like that. I mean, that is entirely on you, but it is not right. I build in the vehicle, which means I put wood on the roof first. I put wood on the floor. I put the sides up. I build the enclosure as part of the vehicle. That way I'm not driving around and my wall sliding back and forth all over the car. You know, you hang a sharp left and you can hear shit creaking back there because your whole wall is going right. I don't do that. I built this shit in the vehicle. It is part of the vehicle structure. It makes the vehicle a whole lot more sound. You throw a stripper pole in here, bam, you got something to lean on when you're driving. I'll be hitting curves holding this thing so I don't be doing this or this. I'll be like, anchored to the vehicle. Like, yeah, I'm in here. But not hating on you if you do that big bullshit. You got to slide in with a forklift or three men, a donkey, and a boy. That's on you. I just don't do it. So... For me to do a rebuild in here, it is going to be rough. I'm going to have to spend a couple weekends cutting shit out of here. Which, cutting the sides out ain't going to be no... But I did build this thing three layers thick, so it's got to suck coming out. But getting the shit off of the roof up here and the floor is going to be a monster. Because I cut all the roof braces out and glued that shit directly to the roof. With PL3X. That ain't no cheap-ass liquid nails in this build. Nope. So it is going to be a mother to come out of here. 
But, oh well, guys, let me know what you think. You know, the options right now are 812s, 1212s, or 615s. That is about the most I can fit in here. I can't fit 815s in here. I mean, could I? Yeah. Do I want to give up room? No. You know, I like how far I am from the back hatch for my amps and battery. Uh, I like where my seat's at in here. When I start a build for a while, I put the seat where it is the most comfortable to drive. And I do all my measuring, and I make sure them front three layers is at the perfect point for that seat. So comfort is a must. I don't want to be one of these guys driving around in a little car that they built straight across the B pillar like this. That ain't having it. No, hell no. I drive this thing like three and four hours to a show sometimes, so I want to be kicked back comfortable in here because comfort matters. I mean, that and I daily drive this. I mean, I call it my daily drive. I do have another Jeep that is like my backup vehicle, but in all reality, this is my daily driver. I enjoy driving it. So, you know, we got to take comfort into consideration in here. So, that's why I don't really want to build any bigger. I probably could put 815s in here if I wanted to sacrifice some of that comfort, but I don't. So anyway, guys, let me know what y'all think, man, because I'm really confused on this. Uh, I mean, we're, we're at a cone area versus motor force, you know, and the 1212s, the most cone area, the most motor force, but might be stuck with a fourth, and I really don't want to do that. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Hope you have a great day. Hope your 2022 is going great. Peace out, guys, and as always, 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 base on.